There are two things that's gonna happen. First, I'm gonna take some stuff apart, and second one, well, that's gonna happen in the next video. I'm going to connect those Zigbee devices to Node-RED. Excellent reason to subscribe. Hey guys, we are talking again about Agara. So if you follow me for some time, you know I've been covering the devices because, well, Agara is hitting Western markets, including UK, Europe and US, and more and more Zigbee 3.0 devices are available via Amazon for you to grab. They're quite nicely designed devices, so you should definitely pay attention. Now, in the previous videos, I talked about the sensors that are being laid out in here, and you can watch this video there if you want to learn more about their Zigbee 3.0 sensor range. Now, I also covered a couple of other devices, including in-wall switches, and something that we're going to talk to about today, which is e hubs. Now, I'm picking this IP camera because it has a Zigbee hub included inside. So, if you want to learn more, it's going to be a video in the cart as well linked. But today we're going to talk about hubs itself. And we're going to start with this. Now, if you follow me for a very long time, you probably know that I covered this. This is a um, Xiaomi Mi Home device made by Agara for Xiaomi Mi Home. And this is one of the hubs that I have on offer. Yeah, twins basically. So let's start with M1S. This is a hub that has been available for some time and it's made now for European markets with uh, home kit support. So if you're an Apple fan, you'll be pleased with that. Now this is not the most um, inexpensive device. Uh, if you're lucky, you're gonna find it on Amazon for about 50 to $60. And a lot of listings actually right now show as unavailable. The hub inside is a mirror copy of the one from the Mi Home and sports similar features. So you have a massive speaker in here, which is handy if you want to link it to a doorbell. You can also play different sounds and there is a RBG LED mood light, which can be used as a light to illuminate your path because by default you're going to pretty much slot it into a socket somewhere. Now, as this is a hub, it bridges Wi-Fi and Zigbee 3.0 devices and supports up to 120 devices, which is more than enough for your household. And just like a Mi Home version, it comes with alarm interface, which means you can use Agara sensors like motion sensors or contact sensors to create your own security system and get instant notifications on your phone and smart devices. Very handy and you should try that. But the main difference between version is the fact that this will actually support your regular speakers like Google Home or Amazon Alexa. Now, this is not something that was possible on the Mi Home so once you add the hub to Agara app, it will show up as a light and you'll have extra control over the light. So you will be able to include that in your automation rules. Now let's switch over to the dark side and talk about the latest hub from them. This is also Wi-Fi uh, to Zigbee hub and it is M2. There are a couple of differences here other than the color. First, you have different I.O. There is a Ethernet connector, so you can use it wired if that's your preference. There is obviously USB power supply, which uh, you're going to use that way. And there is a USB-A, so you could plug something else and power it. Now, this USB-A isn't used for anything really, so you might as well just to take advantage of it. As long as you have a strong power supply, you should be able to power something else with this. Now, just like a previous version, it is equipped with a speaker which is down facing, so you can hook it up to a doorbell or play custom effects. However, because the speaker is down facing, it's slightly quieter. I mean, it's loud enough to be heard, but it is quieter than the other device. What sets it apart is the fact that it doesn't have a LED ring light. What it has inside is infrared blaster. You might find it more useful if you want to control TV or hi-fi, etc. The blaster is 360 degrees, so you really shouldn't have any problems. And it comes with pre-configured list of devices, so you don't have to train painstakingly every single button on your remote. It's nice. By default, the hub won't show up in the list of your devices unless you're going to go and add infrared control devices, in which you'll be able to select M.2 and add the device there. Now that we covered hub, let's move to the latest releases, which is H1 series uh, switches or wall switches. Now, you probably recognize this design because it's thin, it has buttons, it's Zigbee and it's wireless. And yes, it looks like Agara Opal, which I talked about in the past. You can watch me actually play a game using this thing if you're interested. Yeah, I totally used it as a controller because why not? But 
Uh, let's talk about H1. This is a wireless controller. It looks like a wall switch, but it is a wireless remote. And when you add it to a Agara app, it actually won't show up as a device. It will give you two different cards for two different gangs, but those cards will give you um, logs instead of actions. So if you want to recreate the switches in the app itself, you'll have to go to automation rules and create automation policies and create virtual devices. It makes sense because even though it looks like a wall switch, it is actually a remote. With this being a remote, it's a smart remote at that because you can actually configure individual gangs to do individual things, which makes sense. But on top of that, these buttons can be assigned to do different things. If you click once, that's one action. If you click twice, that's another action. And if you press and hold, that's the third action you can configure. Now that's one mode. Agara also claims that there is a much faster mode. It's a simple mode in which Whatever you're gonna do with it, whether you're gonna tap it once, twice, it will register as a single click and will reduce the latency to 50 milliseconds. In all fairness, I tested both modes and they fast enough in both. So yeah, just don't give up on the smart functionality, set it to uh, the smart switches and take advantage of extra functions. Unlike the Agara Opal, the H1 is actually not that hard to open, which is a I guess it's a good thing, however, the battery inside is CR2450, it's massive and Tagara says it's gonna last up to 5 years, which means you won't be opening this anytime soon. I also take a quick look inside at the guts of it and inside I found NXP IC which controls Zigbee. There are also a lot of dev pads to control this device, so if you're into tinkering you can totally use this IC to connect NFC which chipset supports. I talked about the things you can do with it, so let's talk about things you can't do with this. First of all, the LEDs are not persistent, they only light up when you press on it, so don't be using them for locating the device because it's not going to happen. Second of all, this is a battery operated device, so there is no power on state, and if you want to recreate that, you'll have to refer to home automation rules instead. Now that we talk enough about the H1 wireless, let's talk about the one that is connected in here, and I'll be extra careful not to shock myself. As you can see, the switch itself works, however, there is a one caveat, and I'm gonna open with that. I've been given a non-neutral version of this, and right now it's hooked up to a gang number two, which is this one. Now, my gang number one is decoupled, and you can use that gang to connect something else, which is a nice and smart functionality. However, if you press it enough times, it will cause that lamp to flicker, which is annoying, and I really hope that Agara is gonna address. Now let's talk about the switch itself in details. There is a no neutral version which I have on a table and there is also a live and neutral version available for different wiring regions. This is a nice thing. The whole thing is module and it comes with power metering as an option. Now this is option that isn't right now available at Launchpot. That means that there's a big software update coming and I hope they're gonna fix a lot of things that I would like them to fix. Now that you know the worst, let's talk about the good things. First of all, this is a two gang switch and it lets you decouple the relays. And why this is a good thing? I've made a smarter switch myself and it would let me control devices that are in this room but not necessarily connected to this relay. So if you only have a one gang to control, you should definitely consider adding a second gang to your world switch because it works really, really well. Now that you can use that spare gang to automate anything you want in that room using a hub, then, well, you can get creative. There is also an option to configure LEDs on these relays. However, you can turn them on, but on the non-neutral version, you cannot have them on when these relays are off, which is annoying because that would be such a useful feature when you try to locate the switch at dark and you, you, know, you, know what, you don't know what you're doing. Unfortunately, this is not available on non-neutral version, so you have to have the other one to take advantage of this. In terms of range, I had no problems with it, although I didn't put it inside the wall for now, but I ran around the house in a different scenarios, having a router on the other side of the house caused no problems. And that seems to be true for all H1 series, they have absolute amazing range. And I live on two-story building, and so with all the walls and everything going on and troubles I have in a Zigbee and 2.4 network band, that speaks for something. When you add the switch like that, it will appear in your Agara app separately for each gang. You'll be able to customize these, change the icons and rename it to your liking. 
and the advantage of it is that actually they're being supported by Amazon and Alexa apps, so you shouldn't have any problems. Now in terms of usability, it's quite responsive, and whether using a button, whether using an app itself or voice controls, you shouldn't really complain about the response time. So I decided to take a quick look inside, and I quickly discovered the module design. The PCB is actually using the same IC as it being used for the wireless version of this switch, and I expect that to be true on both non-neutral and live and neutral version of this switch. Inside you'll find also that there is plenty of dev pads to try if you want to tinker around, or reuse this for a completely different purpose. Another good thing is a power rating, which is up to 8 amps, which is plenty for lights. There is also an option to recover power state after the power loss, so if you're into that, you can take advantage of that too. In terms of pricing, this should cost around $30. Uh, however, I was not able to confirm the individual listings on Amazon because they are unavailable. This is probably because they freshly launched and, well, we're going to see the stock coming up sooner or later. Now, it's great to have Zigbee devices from Agara hitting Western markets. However, they have to work on two things. First, it's availability of the devices, so we could just go in on Amazon or local electronic retailers and buy these devices. There is obviously a big value in buying certified for the local use devices because they won't invalidate your home insurance. They might not be the cheapest devices to buy, however, Agara hardware is pretty good and with a couple of bucks uh, to iron out, I can see myself using Agara's sensors in my Zigbee network. So if any of that got you interested, in the description of this video you're gonna find everything you need. As for now, I'm going to grab all of these devices and add it to my Zigbee to MQTT network and I'll show you how to make them work with custom coordinator so you don't have to rely on hubs that might not be available at the time of your purchase. So if you want to see this happen, well, you have to bear in mind that I do not have a posting schedule and that's a beautiful transition to my ending of this video. You know how YouTube works, I'll leave you with that, but I would strongly recommend you to follow me on any given social media to get in touch, keep in contact and always know what I'm doing next. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.